Welcome to E360 TV, the live streaming and on-demand destination for influential voices and enlightened audiences. We offer trending, grassroots, and purpose-driven content across a diverse range of interests. E360 TV is more than just watching programs. We offer the ability to interact with live shows connecting audiences to real, authentic influencers and storytellers while streaming to millions of devices. Real experiences. Raw conversations. One destination for it all. E360 TV. Five years ago, the Power of We Symposium was created. Five years ago, the Power of We Symposium was created to provide a platform for kids from all sectors where they could have a safe and comfortable environment in which to share both their joys and concerns. The Power of We Symposium is proud to have served over 250 kids throughout Romania when we took our mission global back in May of 2023. Now, two teams of amazing volunteers from both the U.S. and Romania embarked on an eight-day Legacy of Hope tour, bringing encouragement and hope to not only the kids of Romania, but also the adults who support them, and also to over a hundred kids here in the U.S. who contributed handwritten letters of hope to our Romania mission of 2023. Now, this year, we are proud to provide this opportunity yet again in October, and we are super excited to up our game. New venue, 750 kids this time, and we want to see you there. We're looking forward to meeting you in person at this year's event, which promises, as always, incredible speakers, amazing content, and, of course, some of the greatest kids on the planet. So, mark your calendars for October 24th, and we'll see you here in Chicagoland for the Power of We Symposium 2024. This year's theme is Always Together, Never Alone. Tickets are available now on Eventbrite or at powerofwesymposium.com. I know what you're thinking. That wasn't very much of the bell. Don't worry. I was trying to be nice because it's President's Day. Yay! Welcome to welcome welcome to today's installment of Bathroom Moments. I'm your host, Dr. Lauren. I've almost eaten all of my Rice Krispies. Why? Because you know how they are. Did you guys? I grew up on Rice Krispies. It was the only cereal my grandma would buy when I lived at her house during the week, going to school, and then went home on the weekends. And you have to eat it like instantly or you're going to be eating mush so i'm almost finished mm. what are you having for breakfast today that is the question of the day i want to know because i'm trying to better my breakfast habits what do you have a lot of people have the same thing every day did you know that 73 percent do that's what the statistics say now 
We're going to get our guest in here. I'm not going to do much of a monologue. I didn't do much over the weekend. I went to Michigan. I helped my foster brother uh, install a washer and dryer. And what was the only part I knew how to do? Oh, wait, none of it. I took the boxes back out. That's what I did. I took the boxes back out and put them in my uh, foster dad's truck so he could haul them away. And that was about it. But it was fun to get out. That's about a three-hour drive for me. But it was nice to go and spend the night and see some family. So what was your highlight over the weekend? If you're comfortable, drop it in the comments. Inquiring minds, also known as nosy, like me, want to know. So listen, at this time, I want you to help welcome my sidekick. Y'all know her. She's been here all eight years. This is Lucy McGillicuddy Ricardo. And I love me some Lucy. And I love that bell. It's the bell of purpose. And it's here on purpose. It's not a gimmick. It certainly is not a prop. That's for sure. I like to refer to it as a reminder, it's an opportunity of sorts, because just like that bell, the truth, yep, you guessed it, it has a ring to it. Now, I get it, uh, post-COVID, we're busier than ever. Flat ironing hair, feeding the baby, stuck in traffic, whatever the case may be. But we should never get so busy, so caught up, that we don't recognize the ring of truth when it's out there. Trust me, it's important. So that's the bell of purpose. Who's here today on President's Day? Well, his name is David, and, uh, I want to say it right. Strickle. Strickle like pickle. Yeah. Oh, boy. I had fun being your friend when we were kids. Hey, what's up, Strickle the Pickle? Yeah. My schnizzle. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm he's going to take a little uh, quiz that he doesn't realize, but we're going to play a little game when he gets in here on President's Day, um, and he's going to play for one of you. So we're going to do a book bundle and I don't know, what, $20 gift card? Sound like something y'all want? Okay, that's what it is. Book bundle, $20 Visa gift card. Um, David, no pressure. Uh, who is he? I'm really interested in this thing today, for real. Um, especially T Taya. I, I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, T-Y-A. Um, because y'all know I've been saying it. I got the download last year to start telling y'all that 2024 was really going to be, you might as well just call it what it is, the year of abundance. It is the year of, of abundance. And I remember... Uh, a few years ago, I didn't even realize there was an angel of abundance. And I found mine and she was all wrapped and tied up. And I wasn't, I'm serious. I had scarcity mindset, um, all kind of stuff. And I was like, sorry, I was like, girl, what's wrong with you? Why are you all bound up like that? She goes, you should ask yourself that question. I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, you did it. I said, well, how do I unbind you? She goes, the same way you, you, you did it to begin with. Say it is so. And I did. And I'm can I kidding you? Boy, those gates burst open. That's all I'ma say. And the more you the more you understand what abundance is, and a lot of people think it just means money and tangible things. Uh-uh. We're gonna talk about that today. Get ready, get your pencils ready. So I am going to share a little video. I think I'm on this new platform. Y'all bear with me. You know I am not techie at all, but I think I can do this one. Okay, wait. Okay. I'm so used to StreamYard. Okay, 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 wait a minute. And you guys, you see, I have a dedicated uh, uh, internet line now. There it is, I found it. Okay, take a look at this, you guys. Wait a minute. This is different, this place here is different. Now I have to pop it up on the screen. Okay, add it, okay. And now I'm gonna go over here. And I'm going to hit this. the purpose of life is the expansion of consciousness. You expand in the having of experiences. So allow yourself to move through your triumphs and your storms in appreciation of all of it, even the bad stuff, because that's what makes you whole, not just cruising through life on easy street. When you have a bad experience, say thank you. You made me stronger. You made me a more sophisticated version of myself. I'm a more advanced being in the having of this unwanted experience. You can train your mind to default to that at the onset of any obstacle that you encounter. So the next time you're triggered, the next time you're challenged, the next time you're faced with a problem, step away if you can, take a deep breath, and meet it in gratitude instead of fear or anger or any of those lower vibrational emotions. And when you start practicing this, you will eventually reach a space where that is your automatic default, quite natural reaction to any experience that you encounter in life.
Yay! And look who's here. You look just like that guy that was just on the screen. My how beard's actually you, the David? same color. Yeah. <laughs> how you been? How you been since I saw you last? Really, really good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Now, David, in your bio, um, it says you spent a lot, a lot of time. As a matter, matter of fact, it actually said a lifetime going deep into what you refer to as your inner wisdom. You remember, um, it says you can go back as far as five years old, I believe is what it said, right? Yes. So, okay. I love that because I too uh, really believe that's about the time it started revealing itself to me as well. Seriously. I don't know how much you know about me, but I tell people all the time from the stage, they look at me like I'm crazy, but you can still tell they're kind of like, I wonder if it's really true. How I saw my first angel right at, at that age as a little one and mm -hmm. thank god because a few years later when i entered the foster system there were two that were with me the whole time they're here right now um and it's just amazing work um and i want to start with this i want to start with this but we'll bring it back in i leave for about a minute and let you just start your own vibe with everybody just you know speak from the heart um, and then, of course, you know, somebody's going to ask you about that microphone because everybody does. And then we'll get that in today, too. That's the bomb. That's the diggy bomb bomb microphone. Every time I see it, when I watch your other stuff, like I watched you on some lady's show the other day. And uh, I can't remember her name. I think it was M.M., her initials. Um, I'll figure out who it was. But that microphone of yours is just a real cool thing. So <laughs> I am anxious to get started. I'm going to dip out and give you a second, take it away, and I'll pop back in and we'll officially get started. The first thing we're going to do is let you win something for a listener, a viewer, uh, with some questions about President's Day. So be prepared. Here you go. All you. Oops. Wrong person. <laughs> All you. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's wish me luck on the President's Day quiz because I was not a great student. Uh, school was not my thing for sure. Uh, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit. Uh, we talk about those those angels that I, I believe that angels are expressions of source expressing itself in a way that we can comprehend what it is. And, and, and the purpose of angelic beings is to bring us comfort. And that's an expression of source. Well, source is all of that. Source is ascended masters. Source is God. And what source is, is, is love. It's well-being. It is the well-being of the universe. And we see evidence of that if we really look all around us all the time. And I, I think that Dr. Lauren and I had similar experiences early on that we had uh, a very um, disconnected childhoods for, from the 3D reality. And I did because my parents weren't typically uh, terribly interested in raising me. My father left when I was six. My mother sort of retreated to her bedroom after that, really for the rest of her life. And I was really left to my own devices. And being left to my own devices, that could have gone any direction. But at that age, at that age, five, six, I was really listening to source. I was really listening to that inner knowing and that inner knowing raised me and it, and it moved me. I wasn't in foster care, but I was very latchkey and we lived in an apartment mm -hmm. complex and I had drug dealers and hookers and all kinds of stuff around me. They raised me, <laughs> but mm -hmm. the, that source being is the thing that, that kept me off the drugs and kept me out of trouble for the most part and, and sort of kept me on a path of well-being, not necessarily thriving in school as a student, not necessarily thriving as an athlete or any of that stuff, but it, it kept my well-being flowing to this day. Mm, isn't that something? Ha, huh. well, I, you know, you do show notes, you know, you write down things you wanna make sure you ask and in order, and you just said, keeps me flowing. And at the top, let me pull out. See that in parentheses? Yes. Word of the day. <laughs> I said, see, I had already, I'm serious. Because I was. We're vibing. At, We're vibing. Yes. Well, you know, well, look at the name too. The Stream of David. Now, of course, how old are you right now? I'll be 56 uh, on Saturday. Oh, well, happy birthday. Early. Yo, that's worth the bell. And, um, well, I'm 61. I'll be 62 on the 4th of July. And I'll tell you. I can tell you, get ready, because you, 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 you're going to, um, well, let's just put it this way. In about five, six years, the stream of David will go, going to take on a whole new meaning for you. <laughs> As you get older. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm not kidding you because I'm I'm up out of bed about eight times a night now. And I remember when they used to talk about, yeah, when you get older, you're going to get up a lot at night. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? And we're going to talk about that, the aging process and how to embrace how everything Yeah, it means you're still alive, you. right? Yes. Every trip yes. to the bathroom at 2 a.m., hey, I'm alive. I'm glad I can get up, and I'm glad I don't have the catheter. catheter. I'm yeah. glad I don't have to use a bedpan. I'm grateful that I can get up on my own and all kinds of things. The list is never ending. So yeah. let's really quick. I'm going to make it easy. So you, you're going to do a book bundle. Let me see. I've got some Sean, Sanjeev Chopra books signed for someone. Uh, you guys remember I was there with him uh, to learn Transcendental med Meditation a couple months ago. <laughs> A Deepak's brother, and he's just a great guy. Sent some books home with me, so I've got one with your name on it. Well, kind of to whom it may concern. Um, signed, and let's do fifteen dollar gift card. Fifteen dollar gift card, and so here's the question: It's it's easy. Um, who does President's Day? Who is President's Day? Uh, a federal holiday for who? What person in history was this holiday for in the first place? Because it sounds like it's for a whole bunch of presidents, but it's really. If one. I'm recalling correctly, I thought it was. I thought it was Lincoln and Washington had their own days, and they combined those to make President's Day. Am I not remembering that correctly? Well, they wanted it to be that way. It hasn't officially done it yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. According to what I found today, but. You still get you, you still get the prize. For, well, <laughs> actually, some viewer does because it is Washington. Primarily, it was Washington. His birthday uh, in 1879, and it was uh, proposed by a senator. This was going to be the question, but it was too hard. Stephen Wallace Dorsey of Arkansas and President Rutherford B. Hayes is who signed it into law in uh, 1879. It's always on the third Monday of February, and if you work for someone else. It is holiday premium pay. So to me, I think that'd be a good holiday to work on. Yeah, and nobody's getting together for dinner or anything, you know, and you're getting Make double time, double yeah. your normal pay. So pay yourself double today. You're an entrepreneur. Pay yourself double today. Um, and another uh, little tidbit about President's Day before we move on. It was almost 100 years after George Washington's death on December 14th of 1799 that the uh, uh, his birthday was actually acknowledged. So um, sometimes it takes a minute. Got to wait on it, right? So and your birthday is Saturday. Happy birthday. You're out, you're right in there. Now you got to do is become a president and you can, it could be Washington, Lincoln, and you. Yeah, I'm really going to evolve if I get into politics. That's going to be a real uh, change for me. And you know what? The way you speak, <laughs> I think you're, you, you, you're going to gain access any place you want to go. So let's get into that. Let's get into that. I wanted to... Word of the day, flow. And and you give hints to that, the stream of David. Um, there uh, also streaming woods publishing, one of your brands. So talk about that. What is this thing with you and flow? And I don't mean from the commercial. <laughs> well, we love flow. Right? It's been around a long yeah. time. Good right. Good gig. Let's talk about that. Well, flow is really, for me, it's when you're letting source flow in your life because ego creates a, a separation and there's a purpose to that. And we all have an ego. It doesn't go away as long as we're alive. Yeah. But when you detune your ego and, you know, my practice is all about that, sort of calming the ego down a little bit, calming the matrix down a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you do that, source naturally flows. Well-being naturally flows, even if it's not the 3D version of well-being. We've been told that well-being is yachts and you know, crushing it financially and, and, and that sort of thing. And that's all good stuff. But yeah. the, the flow of well-being just means getting appreciating that you get up and pee at 3 a.m. if you need to. Yeah. You know, or appreciating that you have a catheter and someone's taking care of you, or appreciating that you're still drawing a breath, even though you were told you were going to die six months ago. You know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. The you know what flow life. means to me, David? Seriously, and I'll never forget. I think it was Tucker Bearden. You guys know Tucker. Um uh, when I first started coaching Tucker years ago, I remember he said he lived in Arkansas and he's outdoorsy kind of kid. And he was telling me about, he says, hey, yeah, Lauren, did, um, did you did you know that when water is, you know, dammed, that it starts deteriorating when it's not moving instantly? All these things within 24 hours, millions of different bacterias and things are just all over the place. He goes, but the minute you undam it, the healing, the, the fixing of it, 
the you getting it the back well-being. to the well-being begins yeah. instantly. And so that's what I love about flow, about keeping things moving. And I love uh, I just there's so many things about you that I want to talk about. I'm just going to keep it real. And I went and listened to uh, I think three different um 10 minute pieces of three different interviews of yours because I was looking for something a little different in case someone watching now or later um so they get another glimpse from what people usually talk to you about. So I want to talk about um, the book, definitely. But I want to talk about, I have a feeling that what I'm we're looking at on the screen is um, started when you were that kid. There are things in here. So can you take us from how, where's the bridge? Take us over the bridge from where it began when you were a kid to here. And this is going to be great to see how you do it in such a short period of time, but I'm looking forward sure. to it. Well, early on, I grew up poor. And early on, I thought well-being meant money and material things. I was very impressed with material things when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And I did have source in me telling me that th this material thing that you're coveting, I think it was a Lincoln Mark IV. <laughs> My parents' oh. friend got this new shiny Lincoln and had all these shiny buttons and a summer. Yeah. I'd never seen such a thing. And I remember thinking, I, I'm, I'm still in love with cars to this day. I was always a car fanatic. And I remember it, my parents were, you'll never have that. We'll never have that. We're too poor. And immediately that counter, you can experience anything you want to experience. I took that and got more into a 3D mode in uh, my teens and 20s and even into my 30s of money is happiness. Money is well-being. Money is everything. I understood law of attraction very early on. And I attracted money. And I made myself a, a high income. I wouldn't say a wealthy person. I was no Elon Musk or anything like that, but a high income person. And I was living the life that I thought a rich person was when I was a kid, big house, nice cars, all that stuff. And that was a huge, that's the bridge for me. When I got all the stuff and said, okay, this stuff is nice. I like this stuff, but there's still just this big missing piece in me. I'm still not happy. I don't love myself and the world just seems so messed up. And you know, I'm still just just in this rat race of manifesting, and I did a great job of that materially, but I wasn't a joyous being. And starting to meditate was a huge, huge life-changing event for me. And I had a kundalini awakening, which I didn't even know what that was at the time. In 2010, I started meditating. I just quieted my mind just a little bit. And then that that source that I was letting flow just a little bit in that meditation, just a few sessions in, just erupted and this energy erupted at the base of my spine. It electrified mm -hmm. me at the time. It was for lack of a better term at this hour, it was orgasmic and experience. You know, it was just that energy was just incredible and it just lit me up and that lights me up and electrifies me to this day. And mm -hmm. that was a big turning point. Like, wow, there's something to this. And you were how old then? Uh, gosh, 2010. You're having me do math at this hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right. Where are you in the world? Uh, I was in Seattle, Washington at the time. Where are you now, though? I'm in Palm Springs, California now. Okay, so it's six. It's after six a.m. there. Just after yes. six a.m. Oh, yes, okay. it is. Uh, it's right. six twenty-four here. Yeah, right now. sorry about that. Well, see, <laughs> I get up at four. What time do you get up every day? Uh, I'm usually up by six, six thirty. But I'm having oh. coffee. I'm right. I'm You're not camera it. ready and kiki. No, 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 no. Right. Not usually by this time. But I love being on the show, so I will. I will get up at four thirty for you. Oh, and then we're loving that you're here. I want to. I want to go back. I want to go back because I'm so intrigued. I've never, to be honest with you, spoken with another person who has a story of of, of convening and understanding source at an early, early age. Um, I mean, they're out there. I've heard people on other shows, but not here with me in real person. In life, you know, just here us. So I'm so intrigued. Can you take me back? Take us back, rather. And when did you know it was something real? And everyone, because everyone thought I had imaginary friends, because I'd be talking to them like, and they used to say that every time they dropped me off at a new foster home, I'd like stay back and listen when they tell me, "Now go on back." I okay, and then act like I'm walking away. You know, and then hide mm -hmm. around the corner. And they'd always say, he's a great kid, blah, blah, blah. He's this, that, and the other. Oh, but don't be alarmed if you, you know, you come up on him and he's having this really intense conversation and no one's there but him. Let's just say this. He has a lot of imaginary friends and they do. And I'd be laughing and I'd look at my two angels and they'd be like, Shh. and they'd kind of be laughing. I promise. 
It was real. So I want to know what it was like for you. How did you know? What was it like? I think it's different for all of us. But I want to talk about this. Do you remember when you heard something? Did you hear something? Did you feel something? Did you see something? How did it get to you? I would say that it, it seemed so real to me in the moment. But of course, the matrix tells us it's not real. You're just imagining it. You know, go study, go do what we tell you to do. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, gosh, when I'm in those moments where this is happening, I feel so good. And then when I'm sitting in school or Sunday school and I'm being taught something that I don't necessarily think or believe, it doesn't feel good. So I think I learned early on to pay it, to let my feelings guide me toward what was real for me and what I was being told was real that I just didn't, I, I wasn't, I just wasn't going to buy into it because I was told this is the way you're supposed to believe and think. How old were you, would you say, when this started? That's as early back as I can remember. Yeah. Really, really early on. I, I just, I, I thought there's just a lot of noise out there. But when I go inward or when I pay attention to source revealing itself to me in these magical ways like you did, that feels right to me. And I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things, tell me about this. What was it like for you um, on the empath side of the table? Because I am, that was one of the first ways it really got my attention. Um, I mean, really where I started talking to myself about, what is that? How come it sounds like me, but it doesn't sound like me? I wouldn't have known that. I was really asking things because it was when I started watching injustices with other people. Mm -hmm. So the impact part, um, kids being bullied. Now I wouldn't, they would try to get me to go, you're a sissy. My mom, you know, kids would call me that. And I'm like, you gotta stand up for yourself. Fight those kids back and I wouldn't, but, let them be picking on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Oh, I come, you know, and fight. No, nope, not even think about it. And it yeah, I, I had a, there, there was that, that justice thing. I think for a lot of people that, that have this connection, yeah, you can spend a lifetime working out the vibe of justice. That's in interesting that we're vibing again on that ter term, because I talk about that a lot yeah. where I didn't detune the need for justice until, uh, gosh, January 6th, when the Capitol was, that whole riot thing was oh, going on. Oh, the thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that took my vibe down. And when it took my vibe down, because I've been doing this practice for years where we appreciate everything, we work toward appreciating everything. Yeah. And I thought, well, why am I not, why am I sitting here looking at Fox News and CNN and getting all riled up about this instead of stepping back and appreciating? What's triggering? Why is it triggering me? And I put the phone down and I went and did a meditation and in that meditation, it came clear to me that I still have this transgressor within me, this, this vibration that I've created of this need for justice for myself and for others. And I held on to that for a long time. But the way that I deal with being empathic is, is detuning the judgment of another's experience, especially their suffering. Because I work with people that whose kids were murdered and, and you know things that are just horrific that no one ever wants to experience. But I'm of no service to them if I go down into that that vibration of pain where they are and sort of stay there with them. I'm not offering them anything different and they're seeking something different if they're working with me. So I've got to detune the judgment of that experience and appreciate their suffering as much as I appreciate my own to be of service to them. It took me years, decades to get there. So that that concept of justice is a huge one for all of us because we don't want to see other people suffer. We right. don't want to suffer. We don't want to see other suffering. But wrapping your mind around, okay, the suffering experience is a growth experience. And is it really my place to try to stop that experience for them? And if you think about energy and how energy works, when I'm trying to save you from your suffering, that's my ego. That's not source. Because source loves all of it source says you are an eternal being here having this temporary experience so it's not that we're not going to be benevolent and help other people it's not about that at all it's understanding that appreciating their experience mm. is mm. doing more for them than saying oh you shouldn't be experiencing that oh this is terrible for you oh gosh i want to stop this for you you can still appreciate it and help them solve it hey. as opposed to judging it as negative Absolutely right. Here we go. Another one of those dinging vibe moments. 
Um, and I, I re keep it within reach because I like people to say, I don't just say this shit. Seriously, I mean it. I mean it and I live it. I keep it within reach. I really try to keep it within reach to prove to people I'm not just talking and blowing smoke in the moment. I'm, I'm, I really am consistent with what I know to be true. So when you said what you said about the, the easing of suffering, that's why it's called easing. It's not like, you know, I can lift the car up so you can pull your leg out, but I can't hold it for you to sit down there and clip your toenails before you come out. You better get out soon. I'm going to drop it back on you. Yeah, you got to work together. They've, they've got to they've got to believe, too, or they're going to have a different experience. Exactly. And it takes a lot. Oftentimes, it, you have to get outside of you. you. It's a connection that allows for the easing because it has to be you can't drag someone uh into surrender or it's not surrender you know so even though this is on the back of my business card one of my business cards and it says together let's ease as much suffering in the world as possible and i love that question i ask it to people all the time tell me so and so what is it you feel you get to do every day that allows you to ease some form of suffering in the world and what i love about that david that question is that it's a win-win if they go because one of two things happens either they go Hmm. That's a good one, right? But now they're seeking. They're thinking about it. Why don't I have an answer right there? Da, 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 da. What is it that your pat? What is my passion? Da, da, da. Or they go, oh, that's easy. And then they go right into it. And so I love the question. But I want to ask you this. I'm still back in the little kid. Why? Because so many of us, and I had a thing when I did my master class a couple years ago, when I watched it back. I had an out of body experience where I was sitting next to the original kid in foster care that was there the first night that took on the first sexual abuse when we didn't even know what that term was. We didn't know. I We did not. I didn't come from that. It wasn't that talked about. Well, I remember I, that stuff happening and Pete, we just talked about it like, hey, this, this, this happened and it was just. It didn't have right. It didn't have a label. I remember that very well. Right. That period, that early seventies right. for me was exactly was just everywhere, and it's just how it was. Yeah. Exactly. But it took decades before I found myself sitting right there, just the way I left that kid in the same pajamas, everything, and we were watching the work. And he, I promise, this happened. And he looked at me and goes, "Thank you so much for for." coming and sharing with me why it was so important for us to go through and live what we had to live back then go on now you have my blessing go and continue what we have started and have built together and i really believe that that you know when we like when i was dreaming for now i did i was a different person you see what i mean like mm -hmm. i'm planning things for when I'm in my 80s or 90s, but I have to remember too, I will be a different person by then. I will have grown. I will, things will have changed. You know what I'm saying? I might be the kind of person that says, oh, if I'm, the, you know, if I got a fatal disease or something, don't linger me, you know, don't put me on a ventilator or something. But in the next 25 years, something might change me where they ask me and I say, yeah, I want to be on a, I don't know. So my point is this, when you were, when you, have you been faced with the healing of the inner child part from way back when? Because I know you're talking about your mom locking herself in the room, you having to raise yourself or the people out on the streets were raising you. What was it like when you started facing that kid that you thought was gone, but was been, has been with you growing with you all along? That was where I learned what source really is. Talk about this that inner voice that helped me. You know, I only allowed part of it that when I learned that source is love and appreciation of all things. And we live in this matrix that tells us otherwise that you've got to continually demonize. I was abused as a child. It was terrible. It was awful. It should have never happened. I understand that, but the healing doesn't happen there. The healing happens in look what that did for me. This was my unique life journey. This is what I have encountered and take the victim language out of it a little bit for yourself. It's a lot easier to do this for yourself than for others, for most people. And understand that every experience evolves your consciousness. It makes you a wiser, more evolved version of yourself. We just happen to live in this matrix that tells us there's all this list, this list of things that are never supposed to happen. They're awful, they're terrible, and they're never supposed to be. But they are. 
So we're stuck in that never should, you know, should not be vibe. We're not healing when we're there. We're healing when we realize, okay, my mother was not really active in my life. She didn't really care. She told me she never wanted to have children. But look what that did for me. It made me this independent person. It made me a very curious individual. I had to go learn things myself and parent myself. I am so strong now because of that. Yes. That detuned. And I will tell you, my mother, um, I became friendly with her when I got a little older, started making money. I started helping her out financially. and We became friends for the first time. Then I told her I was gay and she never spoke to me again for the rest of her life for the next 20 years. And so that, that really hurt when that first happened. But over that 20 year period, I detuned her in the appreciation of her exactly as she was and the appreciation of what happened and the no longer needing to have the 3D version of what a mother and son are supposed to be. I'm sure you've done that work as well. Yeah. And until you find that authentic, and I mean authentic, not spiritual bypassing, Yeah, love and light, you know, not that stuff, the authentic work that you've got to do, and it doesn't happen overnight for most people, That's to right. get to that authentic appreciation space. And then I started applying that to everything, everything in life. My, and then once I got to where I really had detuned my own life experience, then I started looking at the world and started detuning the world. Exactly. All the atrocities that happen in the world they are. So let's work stop out. They shouldn't be. Let's send love to that instead of judgment. And then understand that the, the love is a healing energy. That's what source is. That's right. That's right. And all the clues tell us, you know, don't worry, you'll work it out. And that's exactly what you do. You work outward. You get mm -hmm. it right here. Then it you ripples. get it right in your house. Exactly. Then you get it right with your neighbors. Then you get it right with your community. Then you get it right with the world, you see what I'm saying? Because, and you know, I have a speech I do right now. It's a shameless plug in three, two, one. Um, I do that and it's called, um, uh, what is it called? Oh Lord Jesus. I got that should tell me I need to rework the title. Here it is. Okay. And I, and I've already been booked for it, so I better figure it out. Um, but it's all about this. A lot of people worry about more than they need to. Um, as far as how, what success means, how many people they're going to touch, whatever. When really legacy is based on you're setting the table of legacy, it is a reservation of for one. Because you got to set for yourself first. I got to have my cup, my plate. I can't pour into you from a dry ass, empty ass cup. I can't mm -hmm. feed anybody. I don't, can't offer you anything from my kitchen to purpose if I have an empty damn plate or if everything on it is spiritually and emotionally zero calorie. I'm not trying to give the world diet, food. I'm trying to give them nutrition. That's why Christians go to church for their bread. That's why people say I need to be, oh, it feeds my soul. It feeds my soul. So that sort of thing. So let me ask you, let's pivot a little bit. Um, what was it like in your world when you started referring to things that people didn't have a reference point to. That's another part of when you start seeing like where everything is everything. I believe the greater than, that's what I refer to as source now, because everything greater than me is what I talk to. All oh, y'all, things I know and things I don't know. If you can do it better than me, you greater than me. So that's how I look at it. And I believe they all work for us because we're the only ones here that speak. We're here. So I believe it gives me dominion. So I want to say this. I know that source does not make mistakes. It's just right. their way of keeping our shit interesting. And that's it. And if you remember that it's never about just one thing, you when you whatever that one thing is, you go, okay, so this check that one off. What else could this be about? What else could what other feelings could this evoke? What other Yeah, and is the judgment just something I've taught myself to do because I've been taught from the external world to judge these things? As, as should not be. That's the whole, that whole should not be label. The matrix teaches us to slap that label on all sorts of things. You mean to make I'm, sense of everything? Yeah. The, oh, well, this shouldn't be. That's awful. That's terrible. Look at cancel uh -huh, culture. Uh -huh. That's, uh -huh. that's what cancel culture is all about. Somebody messes up and we all do. Somebody messes up and now it's, you know, for the whole world to know. And then suddenly they're banished because of one little thing. Sometimes many little things. Yes. But, you know, usually it's one thing that they do a lot of that we judges should not be and we banish them instead of the healing energy of, of loving them or the, what, whatever we're looking at, any unwanted thing, the universe operates completely in reverse of how 3D reality operates. 
this matrix that we've created creates this separation from source and it's gotten us to where we are in terms of technology and all of that. But here we are becoming more intelligent beings. More of us are channeling now than ever. We all channel in our own way, but more of us are channeling source. And we're coming out of the closet saying, I had to come out of the closet twice, you know. Yeah, I know me too, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the source one, that was, that took longer for me to come out uh, than the gay thing. I came yeah. out as a gay man early on. I'm like, I'm not going to live a, a yeah. fake life. I'm going to be yeah. who I am, even if it hurts me in some way. Yeah, I did the too. The channeling thing, I kept that under wraps until I was 40, well, gosh, 41, 42 years old. Well, because oftentimes too, to be fair, we, it's hard to speak on what you don't understand completely. Yes. And when you're talking about things that most don't have a reference to, or, you know, somebody had to name this a mug, or they were like, hand me one of those things we put that drink in. <laughs> That's what well, it and was. I, I found that the, uh, when, when I delved into the spiritual, you know, went into a metaphysical bookstore and bought books and things like that, I, I wasn't connecting with a lot of that stuff. No. The woo woo. And I understand a lot of people love unicorns and rainbows and the woo woo. I get that. But that didn't really light me up the way just going inward did. Yes. Yes. And well, that, can we talk about this for a minute? Let's just let's just hang our feet over the side of the pool for a second. That it's just like when I was in in organized religion because I had a music ministry once upon a time. So I'd sing at all kinds of churches, right? I mean, all kinds. And I remember when first time I was at a charismatic church, and I knew this this man was faking because he kept like listening to people. I was watching him because I grew up studying people in foster care. I studied them. I'd keep quiet and I'd watch them, but he would start mimicking what people are that woman said oh somebody said la, 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 la. whatever they're doing then he'd sound just i said he's faking right and so i was like mm hmm and so then when i got into the world of like you said there's a lot of woo woo and then there's people who are like oh those poor little baby souls and this then and it just it was something about it that did not ring true that I, and so, and I still see it. I still see it. But again, it's that judgmental piece you were mentioning. Yeah. Where you don't yes. want to do that. So I, I abide by the four agreements. I do my best for that. But let's talk about this, about what do you do when you know you're sitting next to someone who is spinning a hamster wheel? Like, you know what I'm saying? That you know that they don't know. Or they wouldn't be contradicting what they're saying. Or you know what I'm talking about. So people that are like playing the role, but not, oh, because I say talking the talk, but not walking the walk. It's everywhere. How do you deal with it and, and from a place of service? That's what I struggle with sometimes, remembering to be completely of service and stay away from, why in the are you doing that? <laughs> well, I, you know, being of service is about appreciating them exactly how they are, where they are. It doesn't matter if they're into deep woo-woo spirituality, unicorns and rainbows, or if they're devout Catholics, or if they're- Because you know you piss some people off when you said that. Yeah. You know, that's woo-woo. You know they get real sensitive about that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm saying that it's, I, I view it as the woo-woo stuff, but I'm not saying it's wrong or should not be. That's the difference. So what are that's you That's where saying? you are, and maybe that's where you're, you're, you're going to be in that space. What does it really mean to you, woo-woo? Is it like, you're, is it almost like being a hobbyist at this stuff instead of really diving in and well, I, I just think, I, I think it's just where somebody is in their journey and we, we all reach different places. And I will say that I have believed in the past that I was at the top yeah. enlightenment. I get it all now. And as and soon as you think there, you're there, the universe is going to deliver something to you. That's going to knock your ass right back down right and back realize down. that you are not perfect. You are not superior. You are no better than the person that believes in nothing. Yes. So we're all here in the spectrum of beliefs and the whole spectrum is what creates the, the experience that we're Absolutely having. right. So it all Absolutely has value. Right. So the woo-woo person, I'm not saying you're wrong if you're into un Thank unicorns you. and rainbows. I'm saying that that wasn't my vibe and I had to move to something different to, to really to really lock into it and make sense of what and, I And it's okay. Doing. Wherever you are, I say this, as long as you're on something that resembles a people mover or a, 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 a conveyor belt, stay on it. 
It means you're headed somewhere. Well, your, your your belief system is your own unique creation, and it's the thing that is moving you. It's your operating system. That's what Taya is. It's an operating system. That's it's where I want to go. Created. Let's go there. Perfect it's a human timing. created operating system based on the T based on source. What does it stand for? T Y A. Trust your abundance. Trust your abundance. So you mean my bank account, the car in my driveway, the value of my house. What do you mean when it, you it say- It can mean that if that's your belief system. You know I was I mean, in that belief yeah. system and found it not to be you know, the, the thing for me ultimately. But what is uh, it abundance means mean well in this book? In this trust, book? trust the universe. Trust that the universe is, is always caring for you even when it seems like it's not. Because we so, live in this world that tells you you're supposed to look a certain way and be a certain way and have all those things. That's not universal well-being. That's a human ego-driven experience that we create for ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it's an experience. Well-being just means that you are moving through a life journey and you are expanding your consciousness and the having of the experiences. All of well, them. Let's use your mom. Let's use your mom, can we? As an example, because you say everything, right? Mm -hmm. Everything. Okay, so when you came out as gay to your mom and you said she never spoke to you again, how did you... What, how did you place that experience in this bowl of abundance you hold within your, your grasp today? I, I value that very highly because the, the, again, the matrix tells us that your mother loves you unconditionally. And, the, and if they, she doesn't, there's really something wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I realized, well, my mother did not love me in, unconditionally. I got clarity on that. I love clarity. My favorite thing is clarity. And... Mm. That was a big wake up for me that I didn't get the, what the matrix was telling me I was supposed to have, but I was still okay that all I needed to do was trust. And the universe was going to, I was still laughing and having fun and, and, and moving through life and meeting people that I vibed with. And, you know, I'm okay here. I'm not having the thing that life tells me I'm supposed to have, and I'm still okay. I'm still having my experience and she's having hers. And that's when I really came to appreciate that my mother had a very unhappy life experience. It was nothing like the matrix tells us supposed she's a miserable person almost her whole life from what I could tell. Really? And when I fully appreciated her though, she came to me in a dream and it was exactly the way I knew she would have loved to have been in life. And that's when I realized you're fully detuned from me because you are perfection now in your passed on state, your eternal mm. state. Mm. And your life was perfection because that evolved your consciousness. Right. It's what you agree. Right. Um, hmm. Yes, 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 yes. That's absolutely right. Now, let's go to the book. I want to go word for word because everything on the cover of this is there, I am assuming, um, purposefully. Oh, yeah. You, you're right. So when you say- <laughs> five, five years in the making purposely. Yeah, that, okay. So let's let's go. Because, you know, a lot of people go, I was about to say, it's like when I used to say my blessing, my girl said, now say your blessing before you eat. And I'd be like, I was basically eating. I had it already in my mouth before I finished. And she'd go, no, take your time, da, 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 or it doesn't mean anything. So let's talk about what these words mean. When you tell people inside this book, if you're looking to heal the wounds, and break the thought patterns. We all know what heal the wounds means. And we, in most cases, know where a few of them actually exist. But it's those thought patterns that get a lot of us that trip us up because for some reason, that's that's a it, it's a net that we can't catch many fish in. Um, so talk about how you help with that. Describe that for us. Well, there's, it's a process. This is a mindset practice. It's, it's like a religion without rules or worship or judgment. Mm. And... The, a mindset practice is important if you want to break thought patterns, because we've spent a lifetime developing an operating system. It's our, our runs in our subconscious mind. And that's why we can meditate and we can pray and we can read books and we can be all inspired. But then when we get back into our day-to-day -day life, what is our true vibration? Well, our true vibration is reflected in what our life is. And if you love your life, then you've done a great job creating an operating system that's consistent with what you want to experience. But if there's things that you want to change, and we all have things, we're expansive beings by nature, we all want to change some stuff. Usually we get stuck in that, okay, I know I'm creating my life consciously. I get that. I understand what they call law of attraction, but I just can't stop defaulting back to I'm broke or I'm alone or I'm sick or w whatever it is that I just can't shake that belief. I just keep going back to that, even though I try to work it out. Well, this practice gives you the tools to spend a life working that stuff out and realizing that that is life, that that's the game. And you can fall in love with the game instead of feeling like I've got to 
heal this stuff. I've got to fix it. I'm going to cross the finish line and I'm never going to suffer again. Well, right. that's not what life is about. It's it's having a practice that allows you to detune your ego. And in that process, you're automatically allowing more source. We're always in this flow of source versus ego. And we're moving through in this polarized environment, this sort of up and down uh, experience where we're, we're allowing a little more source sometimes and we're allowing more ego at other times. Yeah. If we're suffering, it's always because we've got the ego turned up you know, high and source is being drowned out. When we meditate, we quiet our mind, when we appreciate, when we love, when we don't need anything, we're sort of calming that ego down and we're allowing more source to flow. And when source is flowing, well-being is flowing. But don't expect it to look like the Instagram version of well-being. It's not having the smallest waistline and the youngest look and the hottest, you know, partner and all that stuff necessarily. It's loving exactly what is and allowing more of that stuff to flow. Exactly right. And I'll tell you why I love that mindset right there. A couple things. Number one, um, patterns. Usually when you're associated with a pattern, they say, oh, I'm detecting a pattern. It's not usually flattering, you know, but a practice. You know, because the two are interchangeable. A practice, when it's a positive, it's a practice. When it's not so positive and it's leading to something worse, it's a pattern. You know, you're developing a pattern. Mm -hmm. That's, the, That's there's a point. difference. There's a difference. Um, but the thing about, for me anyway, for me, is I constantly, all I, I mean, and you, you, you said it earlier, uh, you tied it in and I was going to, mentioned it then but i didn't but really it boils down to knowing that every day we just have to find i tell people this and i tell myself this one e and one r if you when you get up when i get up in the morning i already know i can look around me because i keep my i i, I i'm grateful there's gratitude um milestones are all around me you know it's you got to understand why you collect things is it for people to ooh and ah over or is it to remind you when you don't show up this person Wait a minute. I'm not that bad. Look, there's proof. I remember the day they gave me this, the Shooting Star Award from Engaging Speakers, where I did my first speech. That was 300 and some speeches ago. But I remember when they gave me that because it Shooting Star, they named it that for a reason. And I said, maybe, maybe they believe I can go somewhere. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. So I want to ask you about this. When people uh, get to that place where they have to identify things that are holding them back, I know that that's not such an end. That's not a toll booth. A lot of people are willing to throw the change in the hopper because it took me 60 years to really get to the point, David, where when I look back over my life and I said, well, who screwed that up? Or why'd that go south? Or why'd that... Uh, fall apart. In most cases, when I really broke it down, it was me. I was who was responsible. So talk about how you help people. Because listen, when you say an upgraded operating system, and you say you say uh, more about um, you know what's TYA, trust your abundance. Right now, what about the person that's looking around right now, going, look at all these roaches. I ain't got no food in the kitchen. They're going to put my shit out on the street. They said Wednesday morning, da, 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 da. My back is hurting. I, da, 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 da. I ain't had my blood pressure medication in two months. Everything looks crappy. And they go, mm -hmm. how can I trust my abundance? And I ain't got shit. You know, there's, there's two, there's two paths you can take from there. And some people take the path of exiting, either exiting where they're living or exiting humanity. Life. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're all going to do it sooner or later. Others, though, when they bottom out like that, yeah, that's the, the awakening. You know, I was thrown out on the street. I was in pain. I was sleeping in a cardboard box. I have heard so many of these stories where I was at rock bottom, and that's when I had my awakening experience. That's See? when Source came to me. That's when I had nothing else but what you and I had at, at five, six years old, Source there saying, come this way. You're going to be okay even though the world is telling you you're homeless and you're broken, you're sick and you're worthless and, right. and whatever, you're going to be okay. That is available regardless. And it doesn't cost you a dime. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. That love of self is available. And sometimes when you've got nothing else, that's where you find true love of self. For me, it was the opposite. I had to move into a 4,200 square foot house and have a Mercedes and a Porsche in the garage to find love of self because I realized mm -hmm. all this shit isn't doing it for me. 
I love of self source is like, oh yeah, that thing I've been paying attention to. That's what it's all about. Not all the stuff. So whether you're at the top or the bottom, source is there for you. If you're in a suffering state, if you believe that you're done and you're done in and you're finished, source is still there saying, okay, maybe you think it's the bottom. Maybe you got to completely bottom out and then you're, I'm going to be what's left and yeah, you're going to get it. Yes, yes, yes. Makes perfect sense. David, do you coach people? I do. And I created this practice in a coaching program that I do. I tell everybody, listen to the podcast. Then if you like the podcast, read the book. Or if you like what I'm saying, read the book. And then I have a coaching program that you get into later. Uh -huh. Consume all the easy stuff, the free stuff. Mm. Do all of that stuff first. The value. Right. Yes. See, see that. See, I'm the same way. We have a lot of similarities in how we fiercely protect this, 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 these gifts that we've been given. Um, I, I get you. I really do. I love the work you're doing. I want to know more. There's so much. I feel like I've just, you know, barely started smelling the bread that's baking the aroma in the air. There's like, you know what I'm saying? It's just starting. It's just starting to waft in. There's so much to you. Um, man, I'm thinking I want to book you to come back again. I would love to come back. The energy to, is fantastic. Um, I'll even get up at 430 for you again. Would you? <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. I really, I want to do, maybe we should just do a 90 minute television special and let you just, and just get on there and chop it up with some people about this, uh, you know, trust your abundance. It's I trust see is why everything. You, trust I see is why everything. You trademarked it. Yes. And when I googled it, David, you were the only thing out there about this. Really talking with this. This is important. This is really important, and it hasn't. You were chosen to bring it into the world exactly like this, like it's never been. I see it. I see it. I just love it. I think that's what we ought to do. I think we should do a ninety-minute special. Let's do it. Let's do that, you guys. Um, that's what we're going to do. But in the meantime, uh, you guys head over. And I have a couple other roads, if you will, uh, to find David. There's LinkedIn, uh, where you can also check him out, scrolling along the bottom. And then the stream of David, which you see up there, is the website. Now, the book. I am going to drop this link, you guys, uh, into your 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 comment section right now because it's one of those you know how they make those crazy um uh you know urls so this way you guys can just at the end here we're almost finished you can just touch it and head over and take a look at the book and pick it up hopefully um i know i'm going to uh and it looks like it's got a little meat on the bones that book it's not oh, some brochure or pamphlet. No, it's not a brochure. It's a, a big book. book. It's got everything that you need for the practice in there. I think that's great. So tell them where they can catch the show, the podcast. The Stream of David is the podcast. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, the Stream of David podcast is out there. And we've got Facebook group. We've got TikTok. We've got all that stuff, YouTube. Uh, but the podcast is a great way to start. It's, it's okay. four years old. There's a five, six years old. Jeez. There's lots of uh, content in the podcast. That's awesome. There it is. You guys, what a great way to start the week off, start the day off, start your life off. Because every day is a brand new beginning. Every moment is a brand new beginning. So the difference between the, the points of A and B is one second to the next. So just do your best and allow source to help you with all the rest. That's what I encourage with you. Now, listen, I want you to get out of here right now. Get out there, make the most of today. Find a little piece of your higher self. Combine it to what you already have and watch what happens. And I, God willing, will meet you tomorrow morning as always over there on the front porch. We're together. We can have another illuminated conversation. And as always in closing, I'll say it and I'll say it again. I love, love, love you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. So I'll see you. Great job. Thank you so much, David. Uh, for hang out me. for just a second backstage okay. and uh, we'll get on the calendar. Bye, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.
Play 